Hello, my name is Colin Riddington and this is the latest in my series of Isle of Dogs on Access videos and today I'm going to talk to you about different ways of providing help for your users in understanding what the controls do on Access Forms. There is an article that goes with this together with an example app which I'm going to show you and you can find both of those on my website at isleofdogs.co.uk forward slash control hyphen help. Let's explain the different methods that I'm going to show you then. The simplest of all built into access is control tip text. No code is required to use that. The second one is to have similar text but on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. The third is to provide captions yourself which you can format how you like and provide the information on there. Fourth one for new records you can put prompt text to help your users. And lastly I'm going to show you audio help particularly useful for users with poor eyesight and that's where you get it to actually speak the help in terms of text to speech. There is of course a sixth method. You could write a massive manual, maybe 1000 pages plus, which gives details of every single control on every single form and you can guarantee that none of your users will ever look at it. So I wouldn't waste your time with that. Okay, let's look at the example database. Now in this database then I'm going to go through each of these in turn and I've only got two forms. The first one will show you the first two methods and the other three methods are shown on the second form. And you'll notice that control tips are appearing in different places here. I've got it showing on this, this text here, on there, on the second one as well after a short delay up here. And that short delay is something that actually is worth understanding right at the beginning because it doesn't appear immediately. Let's look at the first form. Now it's a simple form and it just shows contact details for a number of different people, standard fields there, last name, first name and so on. It's unlikely your users really would need help with this but the idea is the same for any form. So as I move over any of these controls then, control tip text will appear after a short delay. You notice there was a couple of seconds or so before that appeared. Etc. So how do we do that? Let's go to design view. Click on here. Go to the other tab there and you can see then control tip text then. That's the information that will appear when I hover over the control and it will disappear automatically when I move away from it. And on this one, let's close the form. Enter the last name, enter the first name, enter the gen select the gender from the drop down list and so on. Now it works very simple because you don't need as I say any code at all to operate that but it does have its disadvantages. For example, when I move over here and hold for a few seconds, it's saying click to close the form. Now why is that? Well, that label there is actually associated with this button. So therefore, when I move over that, it will show exactly the same control tip as you get over the button. That's fine in cases like this, or here, because it's next to the control. But if it's at, the label is far away from the control it actually can be very confusing there. So that's one of the problems. The other one being as I mentioned already that it takes a while before the control tip appears. Now what you probably haven't noticed because you haven't been looking at the bottom of the screen is down in the bottom left of the screen on the status bar it's saying exactly the same text as I've got in the control tip. And as I move over each of these in turn you can see it's saying exactly the same thing. But the difference is, unlike each of those, it will appear immediately. Watch as I move, watch the bottom left as I move over the company. It appeared immediately, well before the control tip does. So in that sense it's better. But the disadvantage of it, of course, is it's far away from the control itself. Let's go to design view and show you how I've done that. Now in this particular case then, Let's click on one of these. You may notice as I go over there on text boxes there's also a thing that says status bar text and I'm not using that at the moment. I could do but I'm not doing. I'll explain why in a second. For ones like labels there is no equivalent. There's no status bar text. There is for buttons but not for labels. So first thing is you can't use status bar text using the property sheet 
for labels that you could do for text boxes. What I'm using instead is a mouse move event. Let me just show you that. Now in the mouse move event it says that as I move the mouse over there status bar enter the last name. Now status bar is not a built-in access function it's actually a procedure that I've got written here in a standard module here saying basically status bar together with whatever message you put after it optionally. You can leave it blank if you prefer. Now if that message isn't missing, in other words if there is something there like status bar enter the last name then it will actually, using this rather arcane code put that information in the status bar. That's what that does. Don't worry about how it works. On the other hand, if it is blank, it will then clear the status bar text. So it will remove that and just show whatever the default should be. So if we come back to this then again, so basically as we move over the job role, it will say into job role. As we move away from it, because I've got the detail of the form showing status bar with nothing after it, it will clear that again. Let me just show you this. So down the bottom it says enter the first name. Move away, it's cleared it. Now it just says form view, which is the standard for for these things here. Up here, add a new record and so on. So why don't I use the status bar text? Well let me just show you this a couple of examples here last name I'm going to remove that code for a second and I'm going to put in exactly the same text in here and I'll do the same for the first name as well and remove that save the form and go back now let's have a look see what happens now I've only changed these two, remember. As I move the mouse over there, you'll notice, although the control tip's still appearing, there's nothing appeared yet in the status bar. It doesn't appear until I click on there. And as I move away from the control, it stays there. Now that could be slightly confusing if I now move to another control and hover over first name, it's still saying enter the last name. The control tip's correct. It's only when I actually click on that that changes. And as I said, it doesn't clear automatically. So that can be confusing. And similarly, even if I put this in on the button here, it wouldn't appear until I click it, which is a bit late. So therefore, I don't recommend using the status bar text in this way. I'll just put this back to where it was before, clear that. And the same with this one. Put the code back in here and clear this. So status bar text then, using from the property sheet it has the disadvantage it doesn't actually appear until you click on the control and it stays there until you click on another one using a mouse move event it has the advantage that it appears immediately but the disadvantage of course is that it's right down at the bottom of the screen in a place where users may well not even notice it's there personally i don't use either of these in my own forms Let's go on to the other three methods, and for this I've got an almost identical form then. And this time I've changed the colour of this, but otherwise it's exactly the same. Now I'm not using status bar or control tip text on this one here. But what you notice on here is that I've got a large caption at the bottom there, guiding the users, telling them, actually, if they move the mouse over any item, they'll get additional info. And that additional info is in a much larger text, I've chosen to make it the size I want and it's in a brightly coloured text so it's much more obvious and again it appears when they move over and it move and it disappears when they move away and I've chosen that if you move over the detail area it will say move the mouse over any item for additional info. Here select the gender from the drop down list, here enter the date of birth, birth in the format DD, MM, YYYY, day, month, year, enter the company, enter the job role etc click my web, view my website, tick the checkbox to enable speech help, do that in a second here, add a new record and so on. Now how then does this work? Well if we go to design view and click on here 
again we've got a mouse move event using that for all of these things here and last move, last name mouse move event then telling the text to show and it's saying when we move over there make that the caption of label info which is that purple part here magenta rather that's actually shown on the screen there when we have go to another item such as job role it will tell it to say enter job role and so on select the gender from the drop down list etc when we move over the header it's telling it to clear that message by making it blank let's show you that in practice here so we move over a blank section here nothing there move over that gone move over that move over here now notice this time it's not showing the disconnected text to do with that button deliberate choice there here I'm choosing that it does do so you can control whether it allows it to show that information when you move over the labels instead now let's show you the user prompt when you've got a new record now with a new record you can actually put default text into the control itself that appears while it is blank or null that's never going to be null so it doesn't appear in this one here and so on now if I click on any of those and put in some information there that now changes to black when I click on any of these that default text disappears, the user prompt text disappears. So I take that out again, it comes back in again. Now, how does that work then? Well, this one is done not with code, but by formatting. So if we click on last name here, and we click on format, you will see that it's made up of two parts. And let's just show you here then. First of all, there's the part before the semicolon, with black followed by the ampersand sign which tells it that if there is any information in there to show it in black text otherwise if it's null show that text into last name so as soon as you type anything in there at all that disappears and it shows whatever you typed in in black text here first name exactly the same I'm using black text throughout black MFO showing it in there as the default and so on so it's a very effective method and the thing that works with this is you can use this with another method such as this caption or if you prefer of course with control tip text both of those then have their uses people will be familiar with this from websites and this then has the advantage that it's useful it's more likely to be seen by all your users but it's also particularly useful if you've got users whose eyesight isn't absolutely perfect because it stands out for them but for users with particularly poor eyesight they may well prefer to have audio help now audio help can be enabled in this example app by just ticking that checkbox there as it says we tick that now, move away deliberately briefly, then unticking it will disable the speech help again. But if I now move over any of these items which have got help added there, it's going to speak what that help actually is. So let's try over here. Enter the last name. Enter the first name. Select the gender from the drop down list. You may remember what the text was for date of birth when we actually moved over that enter date of birth in the format dd mm -Y, 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 y listen to this now enter the date of birth in the format dd forward slash millimeter forward slash y y y y okay it's misinterpreted the mm as millimeters you might want to change the text to speech for this particular one enter the company enter the job role if you leave the mouse hovered over any of those items it will actually say it more than once if you're not careful click to view the mendip data systems website click to view the mendip data systems website so the idea is you would probably want to actually move the mouse away fairly quickly now obviously users with eyesight problems might find this very useful that either need to have speakers or headphones otherwise they would irritate other users but for most users it will get irritating fairly quickly but again let's see how this works let's go to design view when we tick that checkbox then let's show you what that first of all does so if we tick this if we click on that then on the click event that will then update a setting in the settings table and the setting is to either enable TTS or to disable it. At the moment, it's enabled. Yes, if I untick it, it will know again. 
Now, when we then move over here, we've got the mouse move event. And I showed you the first part before, which controlling the magenta caption there. And the second part, after the do events, which ensures that that actually happens before it moves on to the next thing there, it says if is TTS is enabled, in other words, that settings table value was set to yes, then to speak that text that's up there. And the vocational speak then that requires the use of the Microsoft speech library speech object library there are two of them confusingly with exactly the same name you want the one that says sappy.dull in the windows system speech common sappy.dull file there there is another one here which you don't want to use which has got exactly the same name thanks microsoft and it's in the speech one core library and it's a newer version it's used for other purposes don't do that one you'd need different code for that one to work there so if it's enabled speak that text that's it and speak it just once while it's still over there and then stop later on and I can actually set this so that if I move over the details section then I've set that text to be blank so although it would try to speak it there's nothing to speak so it's silent there and this is spoken then in the default voice let's just go to this code here and then it's just checking that value then and then the speech thing it just uses the default voice and we can actually just play this default voice here at the moment default voice microsoft hazel desktop english great britain okay and that's is the one that is the default for my system on your system it will be whatever it is for the language in your country text-to-speech has its uses as well i'm just going to untick that now turn it off again so as i said each of these methods have their uses personally i would go for the caption text and the user prompt text on new records and only in, in special occasions would i use text-to-speech for this but it has its purposes as well Thanks ever so much for watching, that's all I want to show you. If you found it useful, please add a like and leave a comment. Subscribe. If you do so, you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded, typically about one a week. And please do suggest any topics for future videos in this series. Thanks again, I'll see you soon.